Hi my boon companions, it's me, Nikki, and today I'm here with a video about some historical novels that I like and I think you will like as well. I'm actually going to have a separate video that are just for medieval books because I seem to have a lot of those. And I really like historical books, so this is going to be fun. Um, let's see. Okay, let's just start with this one. The first one that I think you, I think people would enjoy, and I think people have, um, is The Alienist by Caleb Carr. It is set in 1896 in New York, with, uh, and it's about, um, an alienist or a psychologist, as they're called, um, Dr. Kreitzler, who, along with uh, a newspaper reporter, a female police, I don't, th I want to say sergeant, but sergeant's not the right word. She works for the police, and she's a female, she's like one of the only females, and two, um, men who work not in the morgue but kind of in the morgue um and they are off to um get a, a, a guy that's killing children um so that's fun i i liked it um teddy fucking roosevelt is in this and there is a scene where if you know anything about Teddy Roosevelt, you were like, that is the most Teddy Roosevelt thing that will have ever happened in this book. Teddy is fantastic in this. And they also, um, Christ, Dr. Kreitzler also goes to a, the pri a prison where, um, I've forgotten his name, but he's a real boy who, who killed another child I think and he was uh, I think he was was he gonna be executed and then they got it so he just had to live there I forgot that guy's name but he's in this and it's just wonderful um, I like that it makes you know Teddy Roosevelt he's the governor no sorry he's the police whatever of New York which is true and then he was the mayor of New York and then the governor of the state and then a president don't quote me um, but I like that it has like real people like Teddy and I think some of the other police mentioned are real people and it's got some like Rockefellers and that kind of thing so I do like this it is a bit um, I guess it's, it's a mystery you know all of my historical mysteries um but it's also a little thrillery because of the murders and yeah but it's good i think oh god it's been a while but i think there there might be hmm, not gruesome details but there are child killings in this so if that bothers you don't don't read it uh, i don't know where to put this i don't have any room next we have um Maisie Dobbs by Jacqueline Winspear. It's the first in a series. I don't know if it says how many books there are. It doesn't, but that's okay. This is set in um, 1929 in England. Uh, Maisie was a nurse in World War One, and she opens up her own detective agency, and um, I really like that, because you don't really see a lot about that, and she's just, her first case is an infidelity case that gets worse, and uh, there's, I think she has PTSD, uh, there's a... Um, a veteran, I believe. There's, uh, I think she's got a, 
I don't know if that's a spoiler, so I won't say that. But I recommend this. I loved it. I love a strong female lead in an historical mystery. And a lot of these, um, we can see in the medieval ones, they're all female led, but they're like nuns or a queen or, you know, you don't see a lot of poor women solving mysteries. So this is fun. I like this one. Next, we have uh, Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie. Alan Bradley. It is a Flavia de Luce mystery. Uh, 1950. Um, Buckshaw, I believe. Is a f it could be England. I'm not sure where this is set. But Flavia is just like a little... She's like 12 or 13. She's got... Um, a couple older sisters, I think her mom is dead, and her dad is sort of absent, and Flavia likes murder mysteries, and she likes, um, like, dissection and things that a 12-year-old girl in 1950 shouldn't like, um, and she solves the mystery, so that's cool um and this is also the first in a series that doesn't say how many there are but i did like it a lot yes i like it i think 1950 might be my farthest out of historical mysteries i don't tend to go farther than this uh, okay Next, we have Murphy's Law by Reese Bowen. As you see, the first Molly Murphy mystery. Molly uh, is from Ireland and she flees under a false identity to America. Excuse me. And she comes to New York, Staten, um, Ellis Island, Statue of Liberty. But then a murder happens. And I think it's Molly. Because she was arguing with him. And there's a detective who she likes and she has to essentially clear her name because she's afraid she'll go back to Ireland for the crime she committed and you know it's in Hell's Kitchen Lower East Side so I like this as well I think I looked up um, later books and unsurprisingly her and the detective get married and then he's like i need you to stop solving crime because she opens a detective agency and he goes i need you to stop and she's like no so we're not happy about that but we'll see when i get there next i have something that is like almost the direct opposite of that it is Crocodile on the Sandbank by Elizabeth Peters, the first in the Amelia Peabody mystery. She is, it's a Victorian age, uh, probably before World War One, maybe after, because it is when Egyptology is sort of all the rage, and Amelia, her father dies. Oh. Uh, I found a bookmark. Don't need that. Um, her father dies and she's taking care of him and he basically leaves her everything and all her siblings are like, what? And she's like, see ya. She goes and she goes to Egypt because she wants to be an archaeologist and she likes Egypt and she gets, um, a companion named Evelyn and um they meet the emerson brothers and the emersons are digging up oh god i know it but I, is there a map is there a map no it's um king tut's dad's place who i can remember king tut but not his dad or the place but he's digging that up and then there's a mummy and then stuff is happening 
and Evelyn, sorry, Evelyn, Amelia solves it uh, along with everybody else, and then it's fantastic. And Ev uh, Amelia and Radcliffe get married, and they go out and dig together. And he's like, "If you want to be a digger, archaeologist, and solve crimes, let's do it." And Amelia's like, "Yes, I was gonna do it anyway." So I really enjoy that Radcliffe is like, do what you want. I love you anyway. It's so refreshing. Next we have something a little different. It is a historical book, but it is His Majesty's Dragon by Naomi Novak, the first in the Timur Timur series. I don't know how to say that. If you do, please let me know. Um, this is set in the Napoleonic Wars, but with dragons. That, you hooked me. I love dragons, I love the Napoleonic era. You hooked me. It's fantastic and fabulous. Um, <laughs> uh, Will Lawrence is a sailor, and they get, they find, um, a dragon egg from a French frigate, and it hatches and it bonds to Lawrence and he's like fuck because he doesn't want to be a dragon pilot he wants to be in the navy and basically everybody's like no no all of his friends are like no we don't know you and then everybody who um in the dragon corps they're like because they've been raised to do this a lot of it is family stuff lineage um like there's one dragon maximus whose uh rider is a woman and her daughter is going to be his next rider so it's that kind of thing and then um uh his dragon tim tim -er 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 -er, uh turns out to be a special dragon which leads to some problems in later books and um, but Lawrence and Tim, Tim bond really quickly and it's just great. I loved all the dragons in it. I loved all the people. They go, like, they have the battle. I think they have, um, the battle that Nelson, question mark, won and this, but with dragons. And it's, oh, it's great. I love it. I have m most of the series. I think I'm missing the last three or four books but I love it I love it so much it's like mixing two of my favorite things history and dragons yeah, lovely next we have um, a room with a clue by Kate Kingsbury it's a pennyfoot hotel mystery um, and this is in England and Cecily is running this hotel her husband has died and so she's running it by herself and it's sort of like trying for her but you know all the staff are there to help her um and then they have this sort of party it is a party but it's like I'm not sure what kind of party it's supposed to be and a lady Eleanor Danbury as you can see on the cover plummets to her death and they think it's an accident but Cecily knows her hotel inside and out and she's like it's not an accident so um, with the help of her he's a butler but I can't remember his name Baxter I believe Baxter and the police officers one uh, there's a constable I think who's more willing to to take her word but the of course the inspector's like mm. but it's still good it's a short little cozy mystery i really liked it i didn't know if i was going to but i really do and i'd love to read more and finally oh, 14 minutes i can already tell you the medieval one is gonna be longer i like a medieval mystery i don't know what to tell you we have a bespoke murder the home front detective series by edward marston this is set in 1915 so during world war one 
Um, and it's the home front detectives because they're at home. Um, they're in London. Uh, Lusitania has sunk. So there's a wave of anti-German riots. Um, and an immigrant tailor is found dead in his burnt out shop. And it's up to Des Detective Inspector Herr Harvey. I don't know what I was going to say. Harvey M Marmignon and Sergeant Joe Keedy to solve the crime. Um, oh, I forgot they went to the chaos of the front line. Um, and it's just, again, it's just a cute, cozy little murder mystery. Um, his, uh, detective, Inspector Harvey's, uh, wife and daughter are in it. Um, I think they might help because they're women, or his wife might help more because she knows more about cloth and there's like this whole thing with um, the dead man's family and yeah, it's just, you know, a cute, I say this, a cute little murder mystery. And you know what? In these times, sometimes you just need a cute little murder mystery. These are all, except for maybe the alienist, it's, that's pretty chunky. But the rest of these are pretty short and they're just cozy reads or rereads and they're just great I, and they're mostly mysteries because I love a mystery I love a historical mystery so much and I love them all because like oh they're fantastic and you should read them I hope you read them if you have read them let me know uh, anyway thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful Okay. Goodbye.